So thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon for our thought leadership table discussion. We're here today to talk through uh, some of the trends that are happening in 2013 and what our contact center leaders and contact center managers and directors should be looking forward to in 2014. All right, so I'd first like to introduce my very esteemed panel today. And what I'd really love for you to do is just give us your name, your company, and one little unique fact about yourself that the audience might be interested in. So, all right, Jackie. <laughs> sure, I have the least time to think of the fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my name is Jackie Anderson. I'm a director with JD Power & Associates. And I focus on helping companies maximize their social customer experiences. Um, a fun fact about me is that um, I'm originally from uh, Boston, Massachusetts area, where I was a weather watcher for a number of years. Ooh, I would call that a very fun fact. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Ann Ruxtow. I'm the CMO of LiveOps. So we focus on enabling our clients to do multi-channel social mobile customer service from one single platform. A fun fact, since we're talking about vacationing, um, I'm an excellent fly fisher woman, and my teacher said I have the farthest cast and the worst aim. <laughs> so when I fish, stay away from me. I would say maybe a diameter of half a mile. <laughs> F fish should be scared of you, is that what you're saying? I do catch a few occasionally. There you yes. go. I'm Kevin Hugabarth. I'm the Vice President of Marketing with Higher IQ Solutions. We're a company that helps customer service organizations hire better people faster. I guess the only fun fact that I can think of on such short moments notice and having these two to follow is I spent about 10 years as a semi-professional disc jockey on the air in Chicago. Ooh. Oh, very impressive. We're going to have to talk about that a little <laughs> bit later. Uh, my name is Matthew Ochok. I'm the founder and managing partner of First Call Resolution, booth 232, right over there. <laughs> Just got to get that plug in. Um, we are a boutique domestic-based call center outsourcer. And we do all that really creative, unique stuff that companies don't want to do internally. <clears throat> uh, fun fact, um, even though I'm only 5'8", I have a wicked jump shot. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jack Latzer. I uh, represent, uh, I'm the vice president that represents Logical Smart Path, which is a decision tree tool uh, designed to guide agents to the path you want them to follow. Uh, in terms of a fun fact, uh, University of Kansas graduate and a huge college basketball fan. All right, so the way that we'd really like this to work today is anyone can ask a question. So if you've got something that you're interested in, that you want to know today, let Erica know who's standing right here. Erica, raise your hand, and she'll uh, send me a card and give me a, a little signal that you've got a burning question. Uh, but since we just had an interruption, come over the loudspeaker, uh, why don't we just jump ahead and talk a little bit about call center interruptions? And you know, <laughs> as you know, interruptions seem to occur in, in our business no matter what. And it might be an interruption because of a natural disaster. It could be an interruption because of staffing issues. It could be an interruption because of a social, you know, uh, you know a tweet gone awry. So, Matt, let's talk about social or call center interruptions. Okay. Um, all right. Well. I think uh, as an outsourcer, you have a, um, a vested interest in having a pretty substantial redundancy plan in place. And one of your challenges is you have, let's say, 50 or 100 companies, and everyone has different requirements and different needs. And yet, every one of them needs 99.999% uptime. And so, you know, from our perspective, we try and find places where the weather is not too crazy, because that... You know, hurricanes are usually a bad thing, and so are tornadoes and earthquakes. And uh, you try and mitigate that with a pretty powerful redundancy plan. In. That's all you really do. And so let's talk a little bit now on the social side. When you do have a hurricane, and maybe I should direct this to our weather watcher, uh, when you do have an issue like a hurricane, how can customers or how can clients use social media to best you know, handle uh, an issue like that? 
Um, I'll, I'll take a first stab at it, then you can jump in. Well, first you have to know what's going on, right? So one is proactive, alert, if you know about this. And the comment about um, disaster, since you know LiveOp is a cloud contact center with right. AAA, Symantec, you know, Salesforce, they don't like interruptions. Uh, those are our customers, so active, active is absolutely key. Uh, if you tell Pizza Hut you can't take pizza orders over the weekend, uh, Super Bowl weekend, you're in big trouble. So that, that's one comment. So, so we, we don't like interruptions, and as a matter of fact, we, uh, we, we program to not disallow interruption. On social media, I would say just you know, proactive alert people, but then when it does happen, you know, being a listen mode. The problem, I think, for most companies is that there's enough sentiment analysis and listening tools out there. What's missing right now is how do you engage uh, to actually respond? Because when they do come in, they come in huge volume. So we believe at LiveOps, this is part of what your contact center is supposed to do. Jackie? Yeah, and I would say one of the other issues that comes along with that is, is making sure that there's a transfer of knowledge between agents too. So sometimes these things you know, happen and engagement in social starts. You, you shift change, you have to have someone else pick it up because the volume's so high and companies don't have the kind of solutions in place to share that knowledge transfer. So that's really important too. So one thing we, we notice is you know, when customer complained, um, one thing we would advise most company to think about is pivoting. Um, how do you pivot from a public complaint to a private conversation? So when you respond to a tweet, give them a link for a callback, give them a link to start a web chat directly with the agent that's right now handling that tweet. That seems to be the magic solve to take it off the hot burner, if you will, yeah. Excellent point. And Kevin, are you finding now that hiring needs, recruiting needs are changing because of the emerging channels like social and mobile? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it used to be sufficient that uh, call center agents just had good communication skills, or verbal communication skills. And now it's more important for them to be able to think quickly on their feet, be able to change channels at a moment's notice, being able to, you know, to adequately um, project themselves in social context in a 140 character tweet where you know, it might take them two or three minutes right. in a phone call to try to get their point across. So, yeah, the, the, there's a huge hiring challenge in making sure that you've got the right people performing the right tasks and that you're assessing for the right capabilities for any inbound candidate. And how are your customers being impacted by the emerging channels? Um, well, I think as more and more things go, we talk about the cloud a lot, yes. the web-based, there, there's a strong movement towards self-service mm -hmm. and trying to allow customers to resolve their own issue without having to contact a call center whether that's using social media or self-help services on the web, uh, even IVR solutions that allow someone to solve their own problem without ever talking to a live agent. Excellent. And so, you know, we're, we're talking about, we've, it, what I think is really interesting is we've got outsourcers up here as well as in-house, and then we've got service providers. Do you think the emerging channels are actually more challenging on an outsource provider or the captive site? And I'm going to throw that to anyone. <laughs> I know it's a loaded question. But <laughs> Just yes. I think it's a good question, but I, I think yeah. one of the challenges, if we're talking about social media, maybe, where social media is now is not where it's going to be in about five years. I think it's too new. It's, it changes every year. New tools come out every year. Mm -hmm. New ways to use those tools come out every year. Uh, maybe ask me again in five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope to see you here again in five years. <laughs> and what's your opinion on that? You know, I, you know what's interesting, you know, we have a lot of clients that would dip into social, and I think Jackie can talk to, you know, a lot of the uh, trial and tribulations, mm -hmm. if you will. What they learned is that it's a two-way conversation, that you can do all the marketing promotion you want. They talk back, and when they do talk back, it's typically the same problems that they have. Billing issues, support issues, technical issues. So we're coming right back to the contact center customers or agents again. So when the two department hold hands, and it's one village, and then they use the same tool, they see the same customer interaction history, and then you know you can route, Right. right? That, that seems to be the magic salt, but I would say it's a people challenge as well as a technology challenge for most people nowadays. Yeah. 
I would definitely agree with that. And I would also add that, as you said, coming together as a village, once you see that and you start analyzing the questions and comments that are coming into your social contact center folks, taking that information and transferring it over to the marketing department who can then build out those topics on your Facebook page, you know, through updates on your blogs, your wikis, whatever you might be doing, then you see reduced contacts coming into the contact center. And it's this great cycle because you're providing consumers with the information that you need because you've taken the time to analyze the conversations. Well, I think part and parcel to this, you know, the lowest common denominator in this whole discussion is the agent, the person, right, the workforce, making sure you've got the right person doing the right things at the right times. And one of the things I'm beginning to see more of, um, recruiting and operations used to be very siloed types of organizations, and they would they'd virtually never talk to each other, right? Recruiting would throw people over the transom. Right. Operations would go, why did you hire this person? Because they're really <laughs> not, you know, they don't satisfy my needs. So what I'm seeing more and more of is those two organizations coming together, creating a set of shared goals, shared responsibilities, and shared accountabilities so that the people that are coming onto the call center floor are well well skilled, can handle those types of inquiries, as well as the customary uh, voice level inquiries that we're accustomed to receiving. And one of the things that I really like from a trending perspective is a lot more of this discussion around the importance of the agent. It seems that, you know, a few years ago we were getting away from the people and we were getting away from the agent and focusing so much more on the technology Mm -hmm. and that's not to say that the technology isn't necessary to enable our teams to do the work that they do but customer experience truly is the differentiator these days it's no longer about the product so if you can give me the one thing that you believe you know, organizations should be focusing on from your perspective to make customer service the differentiator. What is that? (laughs) I would say it's, uh, they're going to need to rethink agent incentives. Um, And I truly believe this, that as the world turns more back towards quality customer service Mm -hmm. and away from commoditizing it, You have to accept the fact that your agents have hopes and dreams. They would like a career path too. And you have to acknowledge that and then not only provide that career path, but incent them accordingly. And um, it's also, I mean, I strongly believe this, that somehow tying the incentive of that individual in with the health of the company Mm. is going to be one of the biggest challenges for companies, but also opportunities. Because if that job is simply commoditized, it will just be a job. But if that position turns into a career, the agent will view that position as a career and will provide more of a sense of true loyalty to the company. And you'll see that given back later. That's, that's my belief anyways. That's good. I think also being diligent about stepping back and looking at your business from the customer perspective. And, and you talk about technology and, and how that had been important and, and it's important to hear from an agent perspective as right. well. But not just using technology for technology's sake, but to use it to try and accomplish exactly. the end goal. And, and I think being able to step outside and really look at your business from the customer's perspective, not just from the inside, is critical. And, and being diligent about doing that on an ongoing basis um, and making sure you have that perspective in mind. For me, it's, it's quality of hire, you know, making sure that you're getting the right people on the floor to begin with. You know, we all talk about attrition and turnover. Turnover and attrition really hasn't changed very much in the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, for some companies, it's, you know, almost triple digits. For other companies, it's low single digits. So you need to find out what it takes to get the right person hired to begin with and make sure that everybody kind of rallies around that particular, you know, that particular objective where you continue to maintain siloed operations and recruiting, that's not going to happen. Bring those two together and create some shared goals. Uh, Three words, Uber universal agents, and I actually mean it this time. Okay, I think what we're seeing is that, you know, agent is your single largest workforce. And by the way, when we say agents, we don't just talk about support agents. We're talking about inside sales, marketing. You know, it's really about anybody who has a customer facing function, if you will. And uh, what we have noticed is that if your customers are multi-channel and social, 
and yet you're dealing with them one channel at a time, blind to what's happening on the other channel, of course you're gonna have a terrible NPS score. So we look at that, and I would say another thing is, if they're not happy with their job, and you tell them to park their social media savvy, and their, I mean, look at all the kids nowadays work at the, right? And so you come in, you look at 20 screens, you all tap, all tap, all tap, they're gonna leave. And the attrition rate, one of our uh, case study recently is 49%. And it costs them ten thousand dollars to on ramp an Perfect. agent. You do the math, okay? So, so I think agent is that one variable is so key to a company's success, and the people skill exactly. But arm them, please, with the right tools. Yeah, great. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. And building on it, you know, there our studies show that truly successful companies that are using social to drive customer satisfaction, their agents and social is, is an extension and part of their brand. It's not something separate. So you need, you know, the, the role of your agents becomes that much more important because your agents are your brand. They're the face of your brand, the voice of your brand. And if they're disconnected, then that connection won't come through on social. And that's hugely important. Absolutely agree. Well, that's all the time that we have today, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you so much for your time with our thought leadership table today and for giving us some insight into the things that you're hearing and seeing, and we really appreciate it. So thank you all. Thank you.